Hi, and welcome to this latest immigration law conversation. In today's video, I'm joined by Denai uh, Papa Christopoulou, who's a immigration team manager at RMC. And we're going to talk about some of the latest changes to the EU settlement scheme. I know for a lot of immigration lawyers, the EU settlement scheme causes them a lot of pain and a lot of anguish. So Denai, as well as being a friend and immigration law geek like me, is my go-to expert on the uh, EU settlement scheme. So Denai, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, just tell people who don't know you a bit about you, your background and what you do. Thank you for having me, Adam. So yes, I'm the Immigration Department Manager at the Charity Refugee and Migrant Centre. We are based in Birmingham in the Black Country. We have four centres. Um, we are regulated by the OISC at level three, and we provide free immigration advice from the stage of the initial advice all the way to the tribunal if needed, with 34 advisors across the centres doing this work. So um, we do various areas of immigration law, but um, one of the things that we do is um, advice on complex USS cases. We are funded by the Home Office to deliver this project. So I guess this is what brings me here to talk about some of the changes. No, that's fantastic. And I know you've recently done some training for the excellent HJT on this area. So let's start with some positive news. Um, what's been happening in terms of automatic extensions to pre-settled status. So we know as a result of the IMA judgment back in what, December last year, there's been an announcement in terms of automatic extensions. Tell us a bit about that. Yes, so um, we are gonna talk about the changes brought by the statement of changes of July, 2023. So the main uh, and possibly the only positive change <laughs> was um, the introduction of a provision in Appendix EU that allows the Secretary of State to um, extend pre-settled status without the need for the applicants to make a, an application to the scheme. Um, so the same day of the statement of changes, there was a press release where the Home Office did confirm that they will extend pre-settled status um, for two years automatically. So um, September onwards, pre-settled status holders should have um, started receiving emails confirming that change. It's an automatic change. They don't have to do anything. And um, the change, the two years extension will be reflected on their digital status. Um, at the same time, the Home Office has also announced that they will start sometime in 2024 to upgrade as many pre-settled pre-settled status holders um, to set it as they can once they are eligible, and that will also happen automatically. From what we understand is that the Home Office will use a national insurance number, which was provided as part of the pre-settled application, and they will run um, checks in the system, so with HMRC and DWP, to see if um, the applicant has completed five years and then they will grant settled status automatically. If the checks come back negative, though, it's not the end of the road. The applicant can still apply for pre, um, for settled status, but they just have to use um, alternative residence evidence. No, so that's definitely good news. And, and that came about from the statement of changes on the 17th of July, which is HC1496. And I think also they've updated the naturalization guidance that those mm -hmm. uh, who now have considered to have automatic settled status under the withdrawal agreement are considered free from immigration control. So that that's some good news. We've covered the good news very quickly. <laughs> let's, yes. let's go to some more negative stuff. So also in that July statement of changes, there were some changes brought about in relation to the application deadline and reasonable grounds for late application. Yeah, perhaps you can explain about that. Yeah. I think that's the most significant change of the statement. Um, so it is the, the question of whether the applicant has met the deadline, or if not, do they have reasonable grounds of failing to meet the deadline, has now moved from an eligibility requirement to a validity requirement um, for applications made on or after the 9th of August 2023. This is when the changes come into force. Uh, so that means that Moving to validity means that if the applicant doesn't satisfy the home office that they have reasonable grounds, if they haven't met the deadline and don't have reasonable grounds, the application gets rejected rather than refused, which means no legal remedy. There's yeah. no right of appeal, there's no right of admin review. Um, so just a bit of um, background on this and why this is so significant um, is that, so as we know, 
the deadline for EU nationals and their family members that were residing in the UK before December 2020 was the 30th of June 2021. This is when the end grace period ended. And then joining family members that are coming from abroad or being born in the UK, adopted in the UK, they have three months of the date of entry, birth of adoption to apply. This is when the application is in time for more. These are the main deadlines. For more information, check the required date definition on Appendix EU. Um, so if that application is not made within that deadline, then the applicant needs to show reasonable grounds. So up until the 8th of August, that was an eligibility requirement, and there was lengthy guidance, the EUSS caseworker guidance, which were given examples, was given examples of what could be argued as reasonable grounds. And it was easy things like language barriers that many applicants have or lack of legal representation. Um, so it was easy to argue. And um, as far as we know, there was no refusal solely on the basis of reasonable grounds. The Home Office seemed to just look at the merits if the requirements are met, grant, if not, refuse. Um, and all of a sudden, from the 9th of August onwards, A, it becomes a validity, but also the guidance changes um, to restrict what you can argue as reasonable grounds. So none of these arguments are any more um, valid, according to the guidance. And the applicant has to not only uh, explain why they missed the deadline applicable to them, but also why they haven't applied in the intervening period. So if we're talking about the 30th of June deadline, 2021, we have to explain two and a half years of delay. Um, and they seem to suggest that this could probably only be explained with a medical, uh, for a medical reason, like incapacity or something like that. Um, and then they take a very strict approach towards repeat applications. So application, so when an applicant has made an in-time or out-of-time application to the um, scheme, they say if this got refused, there was um, a legal remedy available to them. They should have challenged that rather than just keep applying. So they say that normally there will not be reasonable grounds if an application has already been made. So again, this is where these applications have become very, very complex now because we have to uh, be very prepared to argue from the beginning. So not only find evidence of residence and eligibility stability, but also reasonable grounds that have to be um, very robust for, for the cases to pass them validity stage yeah i think if they're refused on validity grounds the only option we'll have it be judicial review i suppose in those circumstances and that will be very difficult particularly in cases where there's been those repeat applications certainly i i advised on one recently i i know i contacted you and one of the things i thought about was maybe making an out of time appeal from one yeah. of the in time applications rather than try and challenge the, the late application that was refused on validity grounds. But this, this is a hugely significant issue, I think, that practitioners need to be aware of. And particularly, as you, you've, you've outlined, those, those tightened up guidance in what, what is reasonable grounds. Similarly, in terms of the statement of changes, we've seen some routes close. So what routes have now closed to new applications and, and when did that happen? So two routes have now closed for new applications. The last day um, for any application to submit be submitted was the 8th of August, 2023. The first route is um, what we call the Zambrano carers cases. So as Appendix EU calls it, person with a Zambrano right to reside, which is primary carers of British citizens. And the other route is the Surinder Singh cases. So the family members of a qualifying British citizen under Appendix EU. Um, so from the 9th of August onwards, nobody can make a new application to the scheme. The routes only remain open for those that are already on them. So people that have um, a family permit or pre-settle status, so these will be under these routes. They will be allowed to upgrade, but also people with pending applications, um, admin reviews or appeals that were um, before lodged before the 9th of August, 2023. So the common theme between these two routes is that neither of them were protected by the withdrawal agreement. So the government took a position to include them in Appendix EU for this protection, but they have now decided that they don't want to do that any longer. Um, and they have suggested that British citizens that want to bring their family members in the UK or that they want to regularize the status of family members in the UK, they should apply under the rules, which is probably Appendix FM, Part 8, at all dependent relatives, something like that. Yeah, I think probably Surinder Singh and Zambrano are probably the two routes 
the Home Office don't like and that there's been <laughs> so much case law in terms of Akinsanya and Velage in terms of Zambrano refusals and recent upper tribunal reported decisions in relation to Surinder Singh and those appeals are still going through uh, the system now but from now on no new applications. Now traditionally when an EUSS application was refused there was this dual option of appealing and administrative review that created some tension because do you do them at the same time do you do it sequentially what's changed in terms of rights of appeal and administrative review yeah so there was another statement of changes in september and um, this time um that statement of changes amended appendix areu which is a very long appendix to admin review for eusf applications um so so the amendments um, made it so that decisions that are made on or after the 5th of October 2023, another date to remember, um, they're not eligible for admin review any longer. So these refusals, the only legal remedy against these refusals is now um, the right of appeal under the EU exit regulations 2020. Um, this is because the explanation that was given by the Minister of Immigration, Robert Jenrick, was that there is no, no dual right of redress under the immigration rules. That was the exception. So now we're streamlining this. Um, I think that we uh, already um, advisors have um, expressed concerns about this because we don't have any more the um, possibility of a new application because of the invalidity changes mm -hmm. we discussed. There is no right for admin review any longer. So having appeal as the only legal remedy could cause problems for applicants that can't appeal themselves because they will need a legal representative um, and that means OIC level three or a solicitor or a barrister whereas an admin review can be done or a new application can be done even by the applicant or an OIC level one advisor often so it's easier. Um, I also think that probably that will cause a bit of a backlog in the appeals system. Um, from our experience so far with um, EUSS appeals, the Home Office doesn't do the meaningful review of our um, skeleton argument. So we end up going to, to a hearing for things that are like a document was missing or a caseworker error that could have easily been resolved with an admin review, with a new application, or even just a review of our arguments to save us from the hearing. So that will be an issue, I think. Let's see. If you had a right of administrative review and exercised it before the 5th of October 2023, those will still be be decided. Yes. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. Yes. That was just, by the way, that was the statement of changes, HC 1780. So that's the 7th of September 2023 statement of changes, if people want to look that up. Just finally, tonight, we've covered some of the headline changes. Are there any other recent EUSS changes that you think people, or really hot issues that you think people need to be aware of going forward? Um, so one other thing that changed, and also that people need to be aware, is that um, from the 9th of August again, applications from joining family members that are illegal entrants in the UK will be rejected. That's it. They will not be considered. Um, and I think this is an advice to clients or advisors as well, is that we, because we get this question a lot through our drop-in services, um, there are some EU nationals that want to bring family members in the UK, and these family members often are EU nationals themselves, that they want to come as joining family members. Um, so they ask us whether they should apply for them to come or whether they can come with their passports as EU nationals. So it's, it's really important that people apply for an EUSS family permit or for pre-settled status online before coming to the UK and not just come with their passport. When people use their passports to come to the UK, they are visitors. And visitors means they have the intention of going back rather than um, settling with their family. And often people don't know that and they don't, they don't get asked questions at the border to explain. So they, they, they might get very confused and you know, technically, if we want to see it legally, it could also be a deception reason of like actually rendering you an illegal entrant because you deceived the home office by entering. So far, we haven't seen anything like that because we have had to do some applications with people that were um, came as visitors but then ended up um, staying in the UK. But I just wanted to advise people and flag this up so yeah, they are aware. I think that's so important in terms of the joining family members both knowing about the change in respect of illegal entrance, but particularly thinking about those who are effectively entering as visitors and not, not realising what that means for them and how that might affect future applications. Now, that, that's really helpful, Denai. I think for everyone, 
the EUSS has been what should have been a simple scheme has been a real minefield for people, particularly for clients who come and see us who've done the applications or lodge things themselves. And then you're trying to, to sort out that mess. And hopefully what we've said today provides people with some clarity going forward of the latest changes. So thank you so much for joining me today, Denai. Thank you, Adam. Thank you.